the f game of football hasn't changed. Yeah. It all starts up front. And for our guys to have the physical nature, but the confidence yeah. of not only th what they can do as a unit, but the confidence that they provide everybody else. Yeah. You know, that we're gonna be hatted up, that we're gonna be physical, that we're gonna get a vertical push at the line of scrimmage is, is a good feeling to have as an offensive unit. What's up guys, welcome into the Next Up Podcast. I'm Adam Brenneman. We are on campus at Penn State today, actually on Coach Franklin's balcony, practice field behind us, doing a little Penn State season preview, series of podcasts with coaches, players, everything you need to know about Penn State football going into the season happening right here over the next few days on my YouTube channel. Before we get to the interviews, please subscribe to this channel, whether you're on YouTube, Apple, Spotify, press that subscribe button. All your support allows us to travel around the country and have some of the best guests in the country in college football on this show. So please guys, support the channel. Let's go talk to the guys. Penn State fans, you have an opportunity to see Beaver Stadium in a way you've never seen it before, just two weeks before kickoff on Friday, August 18th, with the Beaver Stadium VIP experience put on by Mercury. Fans will get unparalleled access to the locker room, the broadcast booth, luxury suites, and press box at Beaver Stadium. You'll truly spend a day like a Nittany Lion. And the best part is part of the proceeds will support Penn State football's NIL collective to make sure we can get the best players in the country in Happy Valley. If you're a true Penn State fan, you do not want to miss out on this. Click the link below and claim your spot for the VIP Beaver Stadium experience today. Next up. Feeling good? Two weeks into camp? Not bad. Yeah. Yeah, practice eight today. Got some, uh, some more situations coming at us, you know? So, yeah, it's all good. Are we good, Thomas? Good to get going. Coach, I appreciate you doing this. I'm, oh, I'm excited to have you on and uh, just talk some ball with you. Just what, give me the state of the union for the offense. Uh, you said practice eight today, so how, how are you feeling? You know, we've gotten a lot in in practice through, uh, through eight practices, and, you know, you'd like to get it in as fast as you can so you mm -hmm. get as many reps on the stuff that, that you possibly can and, and, and really start to identify yourself and hone in on the fundamentals and, and make sure that you're maximizing the reps. And now, you know, we, situations come up. So we have four minute drill, we have short yardage, we have uh, third down, a lot of third down work. Uh, today we're working two minute drill. So then that, that starts to add up on you as far as your install, cause you wanna shrink it now, but you gotta get ready for those situations and the earlier the better. Uh, we're seeing some good things, we're seeing some progress. Um, I think we have the, the, the the nice the nice part about you know coaching this year on this particular offense is there's certain things that we know about certain guys and then there's also the unknowns which is fun it's mm -hmm. the fun part of it so seeing the growth and seeing guys uh, continue to learn the system and push one another and seeing the competitiveness you know the overall uh, challenge that we're putting on our guys and it's really player to player yeah. you know we say all the time iron sharpens iron. And these guys are really pushing one another and bringing out the best of one another. So it's great to see. How much does having an ongoing quarterback competition increase the intensity of practice? Do you feel that at all? I think you feel it at every position. Yeah. You know, and, and in my room, I'm very fortunate to have two guys that understand the team concept. So, yes, it's very competitive. Uh, they know how valuable each rep is. Yeah. Uh, they can't relax. They can't rest. And so that's a nice tool to have. That's yeah. it's very valuable to have yeah. that. You know, when I look at the, the offense this year, I feel like for so long at Penn State, uh, the, the struggle for the offense has been the offensive line. It's been the, the depth there and just getting the guys in place. Now I feel like the offensive line is a strength. You have depth. Olu yeah. coming back was obviously massive. Yeah. I know it's big for your offense, but just yeah. put into words how massive it is as a play caller to know you have an experienced offensive yeah. line coming back. Well, it, it, the game of football hasn't changed. Yeah. It, it all starts up front. And for our guys to have the physical nature, but the confidence yeah. of not only th what they can do as a unit, but the confidence that they provide everybody else. Yeah. You know, that we're gonna be hatted up, that we're gonna be physical, that we're gonna get a vertical push at the line of scrimmage is, is a good feeling to have as an offensive unit. Uh, we haven't, you know, it's not like uh, we're where we need to be by any stretch. We gotta continue to improve, but uh, you know, they, they provide you a nice foundation and the toughness side of it, you know, going through a practice for an offensive lineman is way different than going through a practice as a quarterback or a wide receiver or a running back for that matter. And, and so I think the whole offense has an appreciation uh, for what those guys up front do mm -hmm. and the talent, but the toughness 
and the competition is 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 what really makes it makes it work. The one thing I think will be cool for fans to hear is what your install process looks like during training camp. You know, uh, and I know it's somewhat similar school to school and coordinator to coordinator, but there's sure. unique things that I'm sure you yeah. do. How how do you how do you balance installing what you got to get in and the bulk of your offense in? You know what, 20 practices maybe? Well, it goes into our concepts and how we're teaching certain things. So we want to make sure that we're hitting different areas to attack different parts of the field. For mm -hmm. example, you just don't want to go all verticals on one day yeah. and then run your guy's legs off day one. And especially early in camp, you have to be smart on how much you're putting on them mm -hmm. uh, from, from an odometer standpoint. So we're very conscious of that. So we want to make sure that we have a good mix of uh, a wide array of our concepts and not trying to overload and do too much. Yeah. Um, so we'll take uh, maybe a three level concept and a vertical concept and a crossing concept mm -hmm. and then a couple play actions on day one to make sure that all of the concepts are being taught. Yeah. So that day two, when we add into more uh, varieties of that particular you know, concept, mm -hmm they have a place to put it and can label it and the concept yeah. is taught and then there's a little nuance within each individual play that we install from there so it can kind of add up in an organized fashion and yeah. it's not just spread all over the place. <laughs> yeah, you don't just put it all on day one. That's what fans don't realize, yeah, right? it takes time. Um, as far as uh, the new first down rule in college football, where the clock is no longer gonna stop at their first downs outside of two minutes. Yep. How does that change maybe your strategy, your, your, maybe your call sheet, anything? Does it change strategy at all? I don't know how much it changes, but I, I think what it does is it places even more emphasis on how valuable each snap yeah, is because we're losing snaps. Yeah. And so every play that we run has to be maximized. Yeah. Everything that we do, we have to be thinking about efficiency and how – we can score on each drive, and it really boils down to the stat of points per play. Got it. Points per possession, points per play, um, is really the, the most critical stat that, that we look at from an analytic standpoint. Mm -hmm. Obviously, turnovers are super, super important. Yeah. Explosive plays are very, very important in correlating to wins and offensive success. But when we look at our drives, we have to make each drive count and come away with points. Yeah. You just mentioned points per play. What are some of the other offensive goals you set? Maybe it's by a down, you know, what's your goal on first down, second down, third down? You know, what, what, are, what are some of the other uh, goals you have or stats you're trying to hit as an offense? You know, each category we do, I think we, our analytics and, and Coach Franklin do a great job each year breaking it down. So we look at, you know, what's the top 10 and then what's the top five of the country averaging. And then we set our goals based on that and we yeah. want to be in that category. So we want to be over... 15% explosive on our plays. Um, on first down, it's always been, you know, four yards or more is efficient. Mm -hmm. And obviously with that becomes, you know, the balance of being explosive, Yeah. you know, so <laughs> half the distance on second down, mm -hmm. right? So is that, that's efficient. Yeah. Um, and you want to be efficient more than 50% of the time, yeah. obviously. And, um, convert. <laughs> you know, third down, you got to convert. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. whether it's third and one or third and 10, you want to convert yeah. there. So that's the goal. But, you know, it boils down to turnovers, minimizing turnovers, minimizing MAs. Mm -hmm. And now in camp when we're installing, that's what we really want to stamp out. And then we want to be explosive. Yeah. And then explosions are going to learn, uh, lead to scoring points. Guys, we have a new sponsor for the next up podcast called Dara Lab. And I am fired up. Because of Caldera Lab, I'm able to put my best face forward. How do I do that? By adding a skincare routine from Caldera Lab into my day every single day. Now I know what you're saying, there's no way this guy sticks to a skincare routine, but joke's on you because there's no way this face stays this clean and looks this good without it. And honestly, it's not that hard. I just needed the tools and now I have them from Caldera Lab. Here's some insight on my personal routine. Number one, the clean slate. It's a face wash that starts and ends every single day for me. Number two, the base layer, a moisturizer that hydrates my skin, and number three, the good. A bedtime night serum that has my skin feeling tighter and smoother than ever before. The skincare world is not just for females anymore, it's for men too, and it's doing wonders for me. So what are y'all waiting for? Go to calderalab.com slash Adam B for 20% off their best products. That's a huge discount at calderalab.com slash Adam B. And guys, supporting our sponsors like Caldera Lab supports me and allows me to do this podcast every single 
week for all of you. So please support Caldera Lab at calderalab.com slash Adam B for 20% off. I want to go back to uh, take you back to 2012, I think it was. You were the OC at Shippensburg in, <laughs> in uh, Division II school in Pennsylvania. How have you changed the most since you were the OC at Shippensburg to now 2023 at Penn State? Well, back then it was myself, Pete Lee as offensive line coach, and uh, J.C. Morgan as running back coach. Mm-hmm. And it was us three, you know. <laughs> and so there wasn't a mm-hmm. lot of, you know, the communication that, that is involved at this level. That's probably the biggest difference. Um, not only that, but on, you know, the football aspect of it, recruiting is a whole different animal. Yeah. Um, but just being able to not only delegate, but you're listening more, you're asking more questions, you're relying on these guys that are experts in their field uh, to give you the information to make the best decision possible for your team. Yeah. And so we've got a tremendous staff here, the full-time coaches, the, the an, uh, analysts, the GAs, they're all very well informed and they're a great resource. Mm-hmm. And as a coordinator, if you don't use that, then I don't think that's very yeah. intelligent. Uh, it's in our best interest to get a, a, you know, everybody's thoughts mm-hmm. uh, on everything that we're doing to make the best decisions of what's best for this team. You yeah. know, it may have been good in 2015 or even 2021. Mm-hmm. Um, that doesn't mean it's, it's the best thing for us to do right now. So getting everybody's opinion and, and being able to listen as a coordinator is probably the probably the biggest growth, growth that I've made since that time. I, I wanted to ask you about uh, Drew Aller's recruitment because that's so, such a big thing. Obviously, it has a big impact on this program, but you, you were on him when no one else was. I, I remember when you first offered him and he had no other offers. Mm-hmm. He was a three-star and then became the number one quarterback mm-hmm. in the country. How did, what was it in the evaluation process that made you see him on film and said, mm-hmm. he's going to be a dude, no, no, one, no one else knows it yet? The things you look for on tape are, are the ability to see downfield and, and make tough throws in, in tight spaces and, and then to make um, championship elite level throws. Um, not every throw has the same weight. So when you yeah. see certain plays, it's like, okay, well, let's peel it back a little bit more and watch game tape. And then when you watch the game tape, um, it just confirmed what you saw on the highlight tape. And then everything in recruiting, especially with the quarterback position, it's all a piece of it. Yeah. There's, there's never just one thing that, okay, carries a lot more weight than others. There's some things that, that are, but mm-hmm. everything is just a piece uh, from the highlight to the uh, game tape and then, you know, the live eval. Yeah. What is high school coaches saying about them? I think one of the most important things that you can ask yourself when recruiting is what do opposing coaches think of them? Yeah. Sure. You know, they see them. And, and, Watching them and, and being able to eval when they're going against a, a, a better opponent, mm-hmm. when times are tough, when it's down by 14 or down by seven, how are they leading their team? Yeah. Do they have a likability factor to them? And so all those things add up. Drew had all of those traits and, and uh, felt really good about you know, where he was uh, mentally and, and uh, the desire part is huge, yeah. how much they love the game of football. Yeah. And I'm, I'm in an awesome room right now with yeah, all of our no, quarterbacks. Yeah, it's yeah, just incredible. Yeah, yeah. But that's a huge part of it is evaluating the drive mm-hmm. and the want to and the heart and how important it is to them to become great. Yeah. You know, Because you could be as good as you want, as good as you can be, possibly from God-given ability. Yeah. It's still not enough at that position. Yeah. It's a daily grind. And you look at all the best in the NFL. They're constantly they, trying they to find it. ways yeah. to get better. I mean, how many Super Bowls did Tom Brady win? And there's still something left to prove because he yeah. was a sixth round pick or whatever it was. Yeah. And, and that, that motivation, that drive, you, you got to have that at that position. Yeah. Last couple of things, Coach. Um, if you could make one rule change as far as the, the playing rules of college football, what, what would it be? Do you have anything come to mind? Well, that's a great question. I'd, I'd have to take more time on that. Um, I gotta let you prep on that. Okay, I would say this. I would, I would say this one. When you're going fast and you're playing with tempo mm-hmm. and somebody fakes an injury, yeah. they shouldn't be able to come in for the rest of the series for player safety. If they're truly hurt, yeah. then the, the, they, should, they should have a rule uh, looking out for player injuries that that individual, not just one play, they have to sit out. Yeah. But they should be, have to sit out the entire series to get a full medical evaluation for their safety. Yeah. And that would also limit the amount of people that are that are flopping on the ground when they're exhausted just yeah. to, to get a free timeout. 
Do you ever think about the hash marks in college football? Oh, all the time. Uh, to yeah, me, that don't make a whole lot of sense. That would be great. <laughs> if we could squeeze those suckers in, that would be awesome. I mean, you got to flip the whole offense. And <laughs> There's no doubt. It brings four by one into the boundary a little sexier. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. Um, as far as this season offensively, I know, I know the easy answer for how you measure success is wins, but as far as statistically of what you're looking at, how do you measure success this season at the end of the year? Again, we'll go back to the points per possession. Yeah. I think that's a really good gauge. Um, but, you know, our, our mentality around here is one and all mentality. Yeah. And so if we, if we continue to focus on the improvement and how we can get better, and not just from a player's standpoint, but how can we teach better, um, I, I think that's that's how we will ultimately get our goals accomplished is by just daily going about how we can maximize the day, how we can be better organized, how I as an offensive coordinator can communicate better, to teach it better, to make sure our guys understand it thoroughly, uh, to build the depth and the versatility so you know injuries are part of the game. Yeah. And then that's a that's a one of the qualities that great teams have is the ability to move yeah, different yeah. pieces around and still function at a very high level. Yeah. So teaching concepts and understanding each position, what the guy next to you is doing, is a huge factor into that. So it goes back to how we're teaching, our meetings, our organization, mm -hmm. and then the effort. Yeah. You know, the effort. Give great effort every day and good things are gonna happen and just focus on getting better today and then the results should take care of themselves. Last thing I got for you, I just thought of it as you were talking through, through that is uh, personnel and how you balance. I think that's one of the hardest things. When I, when I watch your games on Saturday, how do you decide what personnel to use on certain packages, certain plays, how to manipulate the defense with your personnel? I mean, even from, I've seen you use, you go 13 personnel, you'll use, you'll use two running backs with the room you have there. How, how do you decide and balance what plays are gonna be and be with what personnel packages? I think the most important thing is you gotta understand who your best players are. Yeah. And I think it starts there, because sometimes it's like, okay, regardless of the matchups, yeah. <laughs> these are our best guys, <laughs> Yeah. right? We got some dudes. So yeah. keep that in mind and don't try to get too cute. Mm -hmm. um, but there are matchup problems that you can get, say 11 personnel, um, if they're weak at nickel, you may want to be more yeah. 11. Yeah. Um, if, if they have to play with a true Sam, you know, and maybe you want to be more 11. Uh, conversely, if you go to 12 personnel, well, they want to play with nickel, well, that gives us an advantage in the run, run game, game yeah. right? Yeah. And so if they want to tra play a true base defense with three backers and 12 personnel, now you've got some options if they want to play man and who you're matching up with. Um, and those sorts of things. So yeah. for us, it's usually the 11-12 game and, and how we're looking at the nickel sub position, how they're, how they're bringing the extra DB in or not. Yeah, perfect. Well, Coach, I appreciate your time. Thank Excited you so much. Great season. to see you. Yeah, yeah thank so. you. Appreciate, appreciate it. Man. it. Yeah, yep. it was good. Yeah, thank you.